being told as a kid, well, you just need to work that out. I bet the answer is yes, especially if you have a sibling. Adults are constantly telling kids, get along, don't let it bother you, just ignore it, be nice. Oh, and my favorite, say you're sorry. Now think back to yesterday. How many times were you told the same things? Take a second to count. If you're the typical adult, it won't even take you that long. Then maybe ask a kid the same thing. They'll probably say, oh yeah, my parents tell me that all the time. The truth is, adults don't listen to the wonderful advice they give kids all the time. During the elections, I heard a lot of people arguing about their different political opinion and getting infuriated with each other when they disagreed. Here we were with the elections, and two adults were bad-mouthing each other, telling each other that they had ideas that would never work, and that the other person was awful. The debates felt more like insult competitions than a discussion of what they truly believed in. As part of a Boy Scout project, I had to research the candidates' positions on different topics, and I found that they both had ideas that could work, and were in some cases almost similar. And then the thought struck me. Aren't adults always telling kids to talk to each other in a nice way? To listen to each other and be kind? Can you imagine if our politicians stopped arguing so much and the Democratic and Republican parties would talk? I think they could come up with some reasonable solutions that would work. The country is split down the middle in political opinion. Wouldn't it be better if both sides felt like they won? Imagine a congressional debate where one side says to the other, maybe we can change this policy so it fits your view better. And if they realized that just because they don't agree on one point doesn't mean they can't work together on another issue? Take a second to think back to the last time you experienced conflict that went poorly. Maybe it was a disagreement at work on the best way to proceed with a project, or maybe you're negotiating screen time with your child. Isn't it crazy that they kept saying that you were wrong, 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 and that their idea was so much better? How would you have felt if they had said, I have a different view. Can you help me understand your opinion better? Would you have felt more open to listening to their side and maybe even change your view? My 15-year-old cousin lives in Texas and enjoys sharpshooting as a sport. On Facebook, she updated her profile picture to this. Moments later, one of her family friends, a mom and grown woman, asked, what is that photo? My cousin replied, that's my 50 caliber muzzle loader. The woman then wrote, makes me want to vomit. She then went on to tell my cousin how terrible she was and then used a really bad word. You know the one if you watched Ralphie in A Christmas Story? The one that might have gotten your mouth washed out with soap when you were a kid? Yeah, that one. <laughs> she even defended using it on a teenager's wall saying it's just a normal word in the Scottish vocabulary. To which my cousin replied, just because it's normal doesn't make it any less disrespectful. Later in the conversation, my, wrote, my cousin wrote, okay, I respect your views. I never meant to spark a debate. Next time, will you just message me privately instead? The woman then wrote, Oh, poor girl, please unfriend me, honey. Your hobby disgusts me. My cousin replied, I will not unfriend you simply because we disagree. And of course, everyone else jumped into the fray, and you can imagine how it deteriorated 118 comments later. <laughs> the woman obviously had a valid point. Posting a picture of a gun on Facebook can be seen as offensive, and my cousin should have thought it out better. But imagine how the conversation would have gone if the woman had first said, Hi, honey, I know sharpshooting is a sport you enjoy and you value your skills, but realize that not everyone agrees with that 
and might not view your photo the same way as you do. Would you please consider removing it as your profile picture? Putting it this way opens up the conversation because it's not an attack. Even though my cousin was being really nice about it, she felt like she had to try to defend herself. This is definitely not the way to get someone to listen to you. Problems can be even harder to work out when they are personal or emotional. I've been to four different schools, including the one I'm at now, and one of the big differences that makes me really enjoy this school is the peace table. The peace table is a method we use for solving personal problems or conflict. In my previous schools, if you had a problem, you kind of just had to deal with it. It was unsettling and made it so that little by little, I stopped interacting with people because I was afraid that there was going to be a problem and it was going to make my day terrible. So when I first came to my new school during lunch and recess, I would just sit by myself and read rather than play. Can you imagine a kid reading during recess? The great thing about the peace table is that the goal of it is that each person feels fully heard, so they're more willing to listen to the other side and come up with a win-win solution. So even if I don't have a problem, knowing that there's a way to work things out makes my day go better. So if a problem seems to start happening, I don't worry too much because I know if we can't resolve it right then, either of us can invite each other to the peace table. It is a great way to resolve personal disagreements. Another way we resolve more practical issues at my school is having class meetings. This is the way we set class rules and decide how to run the classroom. Anyone who's interested in the topic gives a mini-speech while the rest of us listen. We hear about what they don't like or why they want something changed. Then we move to consultations and we discuss the issue back and forth and write resolutions. We usually come up with an idea that works for everyone. For example, we are going to completely ban putty, but we decided on a compromise just to have it during certain times of the day. This might seem like a silly kid problem that's easy to solve, but believe me, there are some kids who are just as passionate about their putty as you are about your politics. <laughs> so I started to wonder, why is it that kids are able to come up with all these ideas and solutions at class meeting and the peace table? Do you know what this is? How many of you think it's a seed pod? Well, it is. Now, what would you think if I gave it to you as a present? You might think, uh, why is he giving me a seed pod? Well, back when I was five, I thought these things were pretty cool. So I handed them out to my kindergarten class. They were thrilled. We saw it as a phone, a mustache, a miniature canoe, a magic pencil. The list went on and on. So why is it that kids are able to come up with all these imaginative uses for such a simple object? Adults have grown up and decided what they think about things and opinions are more set in your head, whereas kids are having to constantly learn and listen to new ideas in the classroom and on the playground. Kids are used to change and have had less time in their life to put their opinions in concrete. It seems kids' brains are more flexible and creative. Think about it. Have you ever seen a young kid get a big present? And what did they want to play with? The box it came in. So I looked into this more. It turns out that my prefrontal cortex is less developed than yours. Most adults see this as a negative that my brain is not yet fully developed and does not have the capacity to make organized decisions. 
Well, at work, have you ever been told to think outside the box? We kids live outside the box. The prefrontal cortex is the last area of the brain to develop, which means kids' brains are constantly changing and adapting to new information. So under the right circumstances, we are more willing to come up with new ideas and listen to others' ideas. You may think the solutions I've given you are just for kid problems. Well, my school just attended the Montessori Model United Nations in New York City. You are assigned a topic to learn about and a country to represent. Kids from all over the world come to participate and write resolutions to solve world problems. These resolutions are actually given to the real Secretary General's office of the United Nations. I was on the Security Council this year with 30 other kids discussing the situations in Syria and the Democratic Republic of the Congo. We spent 12 hours over the course of two days discussing these serious world problems. We had the five permanent members who had veto power, and believe me, all those kids wanted to use their veto power. Delegates certainly did not all agree, but nobody was ever rude. Well, maybe there was a little sarcasm, but everyone was really polite and wanted to work out great resolutions. In the end, we were able to come up with over 25 different solutions and passed both resolutions by consensus, meaning everyone in the room agreed. All these solutions could potentially work in real life. Afterwards, I was talking to my friend and asking, why can't the real UN do this? I think the answer is that kids don't have the limits that adults put on themselves on what could be a waste of time and money or impossible. Kids are more willing to take a leap of faith about what is possible. I've experienced how conflict can go badly, and I've also experienced how it can go well. Conflict is in our family, on Facebook, in the classroom, at work, in the world. Conflict is all around us. It's not going away. People are always going to disagree. The difference is how people handle and react to it. It's a choice. Don't back away from disagreeing with someone. You have to start seeing it as an opportunity to learn. You notice the constant advice adults give kids isn't, get your point heard, convince others, be right. No, you are telling us to get along and be nice. You say these things because they're important. If you listen to the advice you are giving kids, you can handle conflict in a co positive way that will really make a difference. Not only will you feel better and the other person feel better, but everyone around you will feel better because it's uncomfortable to be around conflict. If the other person feels heard, they are more willing to listen to you. Handling conflict in a positive way is not just going to affect you. It's a ripple effect. So the next time you experience conflict, remember the seed pod and challenge yourself to look at it with a new perspective. Thank you.